Hey, it's Joseph here. I have recently unboxed HP Spectra X360 that was sent by Computer Upgrade King. This is a follow-up video of that. Please check that out if you haven't already. So today I want to put this laptop against my typical architectural workflows. Architectural workflow is quite close to all tasks that are done for AEC industry in general, but also inclusive of graphic design and some content creation as well. As I have been using this laptop for the past two weeks, as a daily driver, I may be picking on small little things about this laptop that is not necessarily applicable for you if you were to purchase this laptop, but I am quite detail-oriented person in general, so I decided to do that anyways. And I think that will be the only way I can be genuine about my opinion and experience about this laptop. So I have jotted down a couple of things that I thought about this laptop, so I'm gonna just kind of read off of my bullet points that I have written. So the first thing is the form factor and design and because this is a 15 inch device by no means is a small machine it is I would say not too big and it's got a good hefty weight to it however I found this laptop to be a bit too big for a notepad size because if I were to open this and flip it around it becomes basically a notepad where I'm gonna use a pen and draw on if I decide to however it was a little bit big for this purpose so that is definitely a caveat if you wish to do that however with that aside if you were to just fold it back together there is a nice carrying case or carrying sleeve if you call it that was included inside the box and you can actually put this nicely tucked inside and also the pen goes in here nicely so you can tuck it away and carry it a lot easier with this carrying sleeve and because the battery life is quite long you may not need to but you can carry this around if you wish to however you can also purchase something that is a lot smaller that is something like this that is gonna power up this laptop as well it is from rev power and you can have multiple different brands but this one pushes out 45 watt as a total whereas this one will push out 90 watt so this charger will charge the device a lot quicker than this one would for daily usage if you're not pushing graphics too much you'll be able to charge with this and I'd rather carry this one than this one you can neatly tuck away and you can just use USB-C and then just connect to the Thunderbolt USB-C port of the device and charge your laptop as we are still going over the form factor and the design of this laptop as you can see the finish is quite nice although it leaves some fingerprints and oils I don't know if you can see this after YouTube compression of the video but there are some markings that I can clearly see see inside of the video after you have some fingerprint mark then you're gonna see it on top of your laptop whether that matters for you or not that's gonna be your choice however I am really liking this sort of dark gray with the gold option it really does look nice and I also really appreciate the selection of ports that was included on this laptop I have gone in much further detail on my unboxing video but I really like the inclusion of full-size HDMI ports the big Big USB A type port and being able to charge the laptop with Thunderbolt USB C ports. I do not want to forget there is a micro SD card reader here, and if I put the card, it nicely tucks away and that can be used as your storage expansion, which is very, very nice. And for those of you regularly access your cameras and such, you can read the micro SD cards via this port here. And onto the inside, I have a mixed feeling about the number pad that was included onto the laptop. Laptop. Because of this, all the keys were caused to shift to the left and I noticed myself resting my palm like so and because it is on the corner, it sort of digs into my palm. It doesn't really feel nice for prolonged use and also I've noticed the touchpad is really wide so I accidentally touched the trackpad many times and the palm rejection wasn't so great. Maybe slightly narrower and less shifting of the keys would have been beneficial. I don't know how that could be achieved without removing the number pad so that's why I have a mixed feeling about it but for some people number pad is definitely crucial so that is available for you with sacrificing a little bit of digging into your palm area and I don't know if this is caused by the touchpad being wide 
but there is actually give or wobbling of a touchpad if you tap on it. There's a difference between click versus tab. I'm more of a tab on a touchpad than a actually hard press clicker. When you tap on it, you're not supposed to hear any clicking sound. You're supposed to be tapping on it versus when you do a click, you're supposed to press hard on it and it's supposed to give you a feedback of click. However, there's wobble on it. It's not really solid. Therefore, even if I tap on it, it gives slightly and it actually causes inaccurate inputs. I don't know if you can pick that up on the microphone, but I'm going to demonstrate this. So if I click on the touchpad, it would actually be that's a click and depending on where I click, it may be left click versus right click and it doesn't really click on the top portion of a device that's quite usual for any of the laptops and it really clicks from the bottom side and it is not my preferred usage of a touchpad but that is there. However, when I tap on it, I don't expect any sort of give to the actual touchpad which is fine on the top portion of the touchpad. It basically hinges like so. However, on the bottom portion even if I'm not clicking, there is slight give to it. Therefore, it kind of gives me this false sense of clicking. And I don't know if you can hear it, but this is not clicking. And this is just a wobbling of the touchpad that causes this much of give and sound. That is definitely not what I had expected. And I don't know if this is specific to this unit where it just kind of failed in quality control versus a design issue of this specific model of the laptop. And on to the performance of the laptop. By the way, this laptop has been upgraded by Computer Upgrade King and I'm gonna flash the overall spec of this device here on the screen so you guys have better idea of what I'm speaking of. And for a 15 inch laptop, the overall performance is not something unseen before. When it comes to a CPU task, it has no problem handling those as it has the latest generation of i7. When it comes to graphics card related task, it's gonna struggle a lot. So the renderings, it can do, however, I don't think it will work with VR. I have tested, but it doesn't really work. When it comes to graphic card related content, you're probably better off purchasing some sort of gaming machine so it has a lot beefier graphics card. However, MX250 will perform pretty well for the tasks that are light usage of the graphics card such as graphic design or content creation. And it is definitely enough to push 4K of the screen that it has. And by the way, 4K OLED screen is stunning and it shows graphics really, really well. I really enjoy viewing the contents that I create inside of this screen. So if you're the type of person who does hot desking inside of the office or just go outside to a cafe and work there, it will be really good fit because this has long lasting battery and good size screen real estate. This one has the answer for you. Plus, if you ever need to charge your laptop, you can just carry around USB-C power delivery chargers and just connect to the Thunderbolt that is is on the side like so and then it'll start charging so although this is a 15 inch device the portability really comes in handy and I also have noticed if the speaker is at its hundred percent and there's a weird rattle that goes on this side of the device I feel like it's uh, keycaps that are vibrating and it is at hundred percent to be fair let me just test it a little bit I don't know if you can hear that over the microphone and it is not pleasant. Although I don't really use speakers ever, I just purely found this out accidentally. So it doesn't really matter for me. I don't know if it is particular to this unit versus that is applicable for the all laptops that are same model. I don't know, but I decided to show you since that is something that I have noticed. So I'm gonna be recording a screen of this laptop so you guys can also see what is going on here. So here's a doodle that I I have produced inside of this laptop and based on that I have made this model out of SketchUp and as you can see it pans around even though there's a lot of geometry inside here rotate and pan just fine so complex models and such won't have much problem in terms of processing as it doesn't depend on graphics card too much for these things so it performs just fine in terms of 3d modeling and viewing purpose however when it comes to Enscape 
tape which depends on graphics card heavily with that scene you'll notice that it's gonna struggle I am moving it around but it doesn't really follow all that well because it heavily depends on graphics card and the graphics card simply does not have the horsepower to output that much of computing and the fact that this is 4k OLED screen is gonna contribute more so so I'm gonna put this laptop out of its misery by just closing that but other than that everything else performs well even the screen recording of a laptop will consume a lot of computing power as well but just on a CPU side therefore it performs just well without much of a problem there is that in a real-life application I just wanted to show you that in terms of my daily tasks and how it performs against it so the next thing I want to mention is the pen and touch input of this laptop. So overall pen experience of this laptop was not bad at all. There is no eraser on the back like the Surface products. For me to erase certain elements, I can just hold down this button up here or the second button causes the secondary function such as right clicking. And the included tip was plastic and this is probably the only caveat I have for this particular pen. The fact that I'm writing on glossy slippy screen with a plastic tip makes it makes the experience really slippery and because it being glossy it's gonna stick to my palm the writing process was a little bit weird for that matter but in terms of inking there's not much of any lag so I'm comfortably writing on a screen without much of a problem so if I were to own this laptop I'll probably invest little money on a screen protector that is sort of a matte finish which I always have done for my surface products that I have and that will make the writing experience a lot better and if you do more than note taking and light sketches if you're a hardcore hand inking drawer type of person then you can also purchase a tilt pen from HP so that is not included inside of the box that's gonna be something that you're gonna have to purchase separately I believe it was somewhere around $60 I believe it has a eraser on the back and it supports tilt obviously and the experience is better than this pen that was included inside of the box by the way I did a drawing I guess it's more of a doodle than a drawing but I did one for my rendering tutorial video check that video out if you haven't already because it's gonna show you the process of me drawing with this specific unit and this pen I'll also leave a link to that video in the description so when it comes to inking the biggest problem that I I saw was actually not on the screen but on the keyboard so if I were to flip this screen back so that it goes into sort of the tablet mode keys will be exposed onto the back if I lay it flat onto the desk that's not a problem however if I were to hug the device or have my arm under it then I will be pressing some of the buttons that are on the back side of the device and actually most of other devices I have not experienced this but actually Actually, it causes all the keys to be activated if I hold it up like so and if I press button it actually registers all of those input that is going on on the back side I don't know if you can see it at the bottom screen but as I type or rub against the keyboard on the back it will cause typing so it was nearly impossible to rest this on my lap which will cause all sorts of weird thing of pressing buttons or have my hand under it I had to be very careful the way I hold this device even now I'm pressing some stuff that was a weird issue I don't know if this is particular to this device versus a known problem that can be fixed by software update but that is something that I have noticed and that kind of made the inking experience all really difficult so I don't know if this is particular to this device whether I can have this device return and maybe different device won't have this issue but the funny thing is if this device is in a tent mode so the tent mode is something like this where the laptop is standing in this sort of configuration and you can write on it and actually this does not cause any key pressing issue so all of these keys on the keyboard side has been disabled on the tent mode however when the screen is laying flat up against each other it activates the key I don't know why but this is what I have experienced so the next portion is actually value and the value of this laptop is actually great and it probably is the most compelling 
selling part of this device. There are many other 15 inch laptops who occupy the same space where it performs really well in terms of CPU and there are other ones that really performs well in the area of graphics card, say any gaming laptop really. And this is a thin and light and there are some thin and light out there but it's gonna cost more than this. Especially when it is twin one device like so, it's gonna cost a lot more than what you're gonna be paying for this specific device. And added on to that, this one has 4K OLED screen and I don't know any other manufacturer who fits 15 inch 4K OLED screens to that device and charge only this much. The screen is stunning and it is definitely a value. And this one also comes with obviously the charger and the sleeve and this pen. And for example, Microsoft and Dell will charge you extra $100 for a pen and this comes with the laptop. It's definitely a win. And based on my short research, at the end of year 2019, the price of this laptop is spanning somewhere between $1,400 to $1,750. So it is definitely a value package. You can get other laptops but probably not at this spec. Such an amazing screen, 4K OLED at 15 inch. As part of the conclusion of this laptop, I think this laptop being 15 inch is probably a little bit too big for my daily usage. I tend to weigh a little bit more on note taking and sketching and just being a lot more mobile. I don't necessarily need all that screen for my daily tasks and I can rely on desktop that has a lot bigger screen. So I'd rather go with 13 inch and I actually know that HP Spectra has 13 inch model. So I'm definitely going to have a look at that model as well. If it actually had beefier graphics cards, maybe 15 inch will be justifiable. But since it doesn't have any GTX grade, it just has a MX250. So I can't really justify carrying around 15 inch device for that. The fact that the keys do not get deactivated when you flip into the notepad mode, that was the biggest caveat to the purpose of this laptop like note taking for me and the fact that the touchpad wobbles a little bit when I use this was giving me a little bit of annoyance but I may be nitpicking and something that is not apparent on other units and on to the pros of this device it's two-in-one capabilities where you can touch and click on things and then definitely use a pen to draw on it those features are really useful ones for architectural professionals like myself. And because we are designers, I do care about overall looks and the design. It is sleek looking. I like the color scheme. Perhaps it is a little bit more complex than I would have liked. I would have appreciated more simpler design. It is definitely not bad looking laptop. So I do appreciate the overall look and the feel of the design. And also the ports of this device. Full size HDMI, 3.5 mil headphone jack, those you cannot really take it for granted the USB a type port to Thunderbolt port the SD card reader and that's really all I can ask for and it has it all so this laptop poses really great value it is not a value laptop but it has 4k OLED screen that is 15 inch and it also has a pen included in the box and then it is a two-in-one device where you can do touch and pen input all of those features are not offered with this price of a laptop. So you're gonna be getting a lot of laptop for the money that you pay for. Overall, this 4K OLED screen makes a stunning display. Seeing images and drawing on this screen is really great experience. And I'm gonna miss that as I return this review unit. And even though the 4K OLED screen eats up a lot of juice, this device has good size battery for you to last hours during the day without the charger. So Overall, this laptop is definitely not perfect. And 32 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of storage is probably an overkill. However, the 4K screen that is paired with long lasting battery makes a good sense for people who's looking to do a lot of content creation, graphic design, and perhaps you can do a lot of 2D, 3D drawings on this laptop on the go. And if you're a 
professional who's dependent on color accurate screen and long lasting battery, you're in for a good solution here. And if you're the type of person who doesn't mind carrying a little bit more for bigger size screen, then this device would make a lot of sense as well. However, if you need to do renderings very often and have to do VR occasionally, then this device may not be suitable. Although I'm aware HP offers same exact format of a device with Intel i7 9th gen instead and IPS panel instead of OLED and GTX 1650 instead of MX250. So that one is going to have much better graphics performance. I don't know about VR, but you may be able to do that occasionally, much better than MX250. So if you like the overall format of this device, but if you need more graphics horsepower, then you can look into that as well. Personally, however, 15 inch device without beefier graphics card didn't really make much sense as I do VR and often do renderings. But if this was within a 13 inch package, I may think differently as I won't do rendering much on that device. So the 13 inch variant of HP Spectra will be something that I'm gonna look out for and see if I can review as well. So expect that in the near future as well. So if this review was useful for you, please like and subscribe to my channel for videos like this. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.